Okay, let's talk about cosine. I want to kind of relate it to the sine function um, that we just looked at. Obviously, the values are the same. They're just, <clears throat> they just occur at different x values. Okay, uh, remember sine and cosine, uh, your values flip-flopped between pi over 6 and pi over 3, and they were the same for pi over 4. <clears throat> Um, and they also had opposite values at zero, excuse me, zero and pi over two. Um, so that means that the graph is going to have the same general shape. Uh, it just is kind of shifted over. Okay, remember back to what we just did with the sign of x. We started at the origin. We don't start at the origin this time. We start at uh, one, when x is zero, y is one, but if you kind of just zoom in on this part of the graph between pi over two and three pi over two, excuse me, negative pi over two and positive three pi over two, if you just look at that part of the graph, that is the exact same graph of sine of x, it's just moved over a little bit, um, pi over two units, it shifted pi over two units to the left, but it's the exact same graph. Okay, it just looks different because of where it's centered. So let's talk about those same characteristics that we just looked at. Uh, this one starts, instead of starting at the origin, it starts off the origin. It starts at 0, 1. Its domain is still all real numbers. Uh, there are no issues. You can find the cosine of any angle. There aren't any undefined places. The range is the same. It's going from negative 1 to positive 1. There's no difference there. It's just where those values occur. The period, okay? If we start at 0, 1, and we go all the way through all of our values, it's going to start repeating at the same place. At 2 pi is where this starts repeating. Now, if it's not very clear, um, on our smaller graph here, you can do the same thing that we did a second ago, and you can put cosine of x in your calculator instead of sine of x. And if you graph it from negative 4 pi to positive 4 pi, you can see here, if you start right here at 0, 1, and you go all the way through, it's going to repeat itself um, between 2 pi and 4 pi. So the length of the period is 2 pi our amplitude is still 1 because our midline is still the x-axis. That's still the middle um, that's going to cut this in half horizontally. Um, so the, the amplitude is still positive 1. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about uh, what, what happens if we stick some extra numbers in these functions, okay? It's not just sine of x and cosine of x. What if we throw some extra numbers in there? So sine and cosine, not only are they referred to as periodic functions, they're also called sinusoids. It's a very strange word, and I already misspelled it by trying to talk and write at the same time, okay? Sinusoids. S I N. U S O I D S. Okay, they're called sinusoids, um, which is just another way of it. It's a specific term here for these trig functions. Um, but beside that, you may want to also write that they are periodic. Okay, periodic meaning that they repeat, um, repeat forever, really. They never stop. We can continue graphing these. Okay, I expanded it on my calculator from negative 4 pi to positive 4 pi, but I could have done 100 pi. Um, it, the, it's going to be the same pattern over and over and over again. <clears throat> okay, so those blanks there on your paper, when I say f of x is equal to um, the first blank, we're going to put an a there. The blank with the x gets a b. Then we've got C and D. So it's very nice. They're in alphabetical order. It's kind of like with our quadratics. Remember the standard form of a quadratic or the standard form of a polynomial? AX squared plus BX plus C. Or if it was bigger, AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. Uh, same kind of idea here. 
The coefficient a, that's the one that we're going to deal with. Uh, a and b are the ones that we're going to deal with the most, but a affects our amplitude. Okay, it's going to affect how tall or how short our function is going to be. Uh, b affects the period. Okay, it's going to change the period. We can change uh, the amount or the distance that it takes for our function to begin repeating. And then C and D, we're adding those numbers or potentially subtracting those numbers. Those cause horizontal and vertical shifts. Um, let's see here. D is the vertical. And C can cause, we're not going to deal with C very much. We'll deal with D more than C. C can cause horizontal shifts. D is the one that we would deal with more uh, frequently. Okay, so when there is a coefficient in front of the trig function, the amplitude is no longer 1, but is instead uh, the absolute value of the coefficient a. Amplitude is always positive. I mentioned that a second ago, um, but reiterating it because people still kind of mess it up sometimes. But it's the absolute value of the coefficient a. Now, <clears throat> uh, based on our experience with functions before, when that number is negative, what tends to happen to our function? What would a negative yeah, it flips it over the x-axis, so it can flip your sine and cosine functions over, um, but we still refer to the amplitude as a positive value. Um, so that's the next blanks here. If the coefficient a is negative, then the function is flipped over the x-axis. It's flipped over the x-axis. And then the other most common thing we're going to deal with is when we have B, that affects the standard period of 2 pi. Okay, that's our standard period. Um, and then we, but we figure out the new period according to this formula. The new period is equal to 2 pi divided by B. Now, you're going to have to kind of work that out by hand. You'll see here in a second. Uh, how we deal with that, uh, but you'll have to work that out by hand. Now, um, we may get it to it today. We probably will have to do it tomorrow, but you can also rearrange this formula. Okay, if uh, uh, we're going to look at, if I'm given a picture of the graph, can I write the equation? So that means that we would have to figure out what B is. Well, if we wanted to solve this for B instead of the new period, um, then those two things just kind of flip places. So this can also be written as b is equal to 2 pi divided by the new period. So if you needed to figure out what that coefficient in the equation was, you could analyze your period visually, um, put that under 2 pi, and that will give you the coefficient that goes in the equation. Won't need that today, but probably we'll need that tomorrow. Okay, so let's look at some uh, equations here and find the amplitude period and then graph one period of the function. We're going to do this without relying upon our calculator. Okay, I want you to be able to do this by hand. Um, so amplitude is always the easiest part. Okay, amplitude is the coefficient in front right here. So the amplitude of that first example is 2. Okay, so this function, this uh, sine function is going to be taller. It's going to range between negative 2 and positive 2 instead of negative 1 and positive 1. The period, okay, we find the period by 2 wing 2 pi divided by the coefficient in front of the x, which in this case is 4. So if we simplify that 2 pi over 4, 
2 over 4 is 1 half, so that means that our period is now pi over 2. So instead of our entire function um, fitting between 0 and 2 pi, now the entire thing has to fix, fit between 0 and pi over 2. So it's going to really, really squish it uh, horizontally. Um, so uh, you can draw your own little graph right here. Now I'm going to try and emphasize here that we're only going between 0 and 2 pi, or excuse me, pi over 2. We're not going between 0 and 2 pi. We have a shorter distance here to fit our entire function in. Now, this is sine, so it starts at the origin, which means it ends at the origin, okay? The period's going to start and end in the same place. Uh, it ranges between, since our period, or excuse me, our amplitude is 2, it's going to range between negative 2 and positive 2. Um, we hit 0 halfway through the entire period, and we're going to hit our maximum point halfway between those halfway points, and our minimum point halfway between the second half. So this is just how I'm going to sketch my function without relying upon my calculator. Okay, so I'm just taking that general function, that first one that we graphed, and using some, some uh, specific characteristics about it to be able to draw this graph. Okay? Let's look at a cosine example. f of x is equal to 3 cosine of 3x over 2. So again, amplitude's the easy part. The amplitude is 3. It was positive, so we don't have to worry about flipping anything. Our period is 2 pi over the coefficient in front of x. Well, this time, x is kind of mixed in there, okay? But the coefficient is the 3 over 2. So we have 2 pi divided by 3 over 2. Well, y'all remember what we do when we have a fraction within a fraction. We keep the top the same. We flip the bottom over and multiply. So that gives us 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 is a little bit less than 2 pi. Okay, 4 pi over 3 is a little bit less than 2 pi. How do I know that? Well, a couple of ways. Um, 4 over 3 is a fraction that is less than 2. Or I can look at well, where did it come from. I took 2 pi and multiplied it by 2 thirds. I only have 2 thirds of the period that I had before, um, but it's, it's not drastically smaller. Um, but this one is quite a bit taller because the amplitude is 3. So cosine starts off the origin. It starts at 0, 1. And if I've got a standard 2 pi here, I'm only going to 4 pi over 3, um, which, let's see here, that's bigger than 1, but not a whole lot bigger than 1 pi. So we've got 1 pi right here. 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant. So anyways, I'm going to say 4 pi over 3 is about right here. So I have to fit my entire cycle between 0 and 4 power 3. So cosine and sine, both of them start and end in the same place. So at 4 power 3, my value is going to be 1. Um, just basically, I'm sorry? Oh. So 3 over 1 is always 1? Sorry, sorry, I meant it, it would start and end at 3. Okay. I didn't mean 1. Sorry. Amplitude is 3. So it, it's going to start and end. Um, so that means halfway through, okay, whatever that may be, um, my y value is going to be negative 3. Okay, halfway through, I'm going to hit my minimum. And then if I split both those halves in half, I'm going to cross the axis. I'm going to cross the x-axis. So that's how I would fill in my function. 